So, so I want to try to get through it as quick as we can. If we can uh, just ask that if, if somebody addresses something that you want to address, if you can add something new, great. If not, you know, tell us you're, you're in opposition as well, and we will uh, we'll note that. But if anybody would like to get up and be the first one, come on up. Oh, somebody's got to. There you go. Come on up. I'm always first. There's first. I don't know why. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll put the sign up sheet there, and if somebody wants to start queuing up, we'll uh, we'll get to you as quick as we can. If you can keep your remarks as quick as possible, we will uh, we'll go from there. Okay, prepared. If you don't mind, we have a handout as well. We would please the chairman if we could hand them out real quick. We have a presentation as well that we'd love to present. Okay. So give us your name for the record as well. Yes, my name is Robert Fishwick. Um, me and my family reside at 289 Pleasant Street. We are three houses to the east of the property at 297. Okay. photograph um, we try to get a lot of people into the photo this nuts is not everybody in the neighborhood so in um, disclosure we actually took two separate photos and melded them into one <laughs> we just couldn't get everybody plus the horse and the chicken it's, it's all good now yes there, right? yes okay. okay very good um, I also want to just point out that you'll also note that throughout the presentation there are many photos of our property uh, and of our family we put these in purposely because there was, um, at some point, someone made the comment that we were an insignificant neighborhood. And I would like to point out that we are not in any way, shape, or form insignificant. I have an introduction that I would like to open with this evening. Uh, as I started off, good evening, uh, Chairman Woodfin and members of the Planning Board. We, the residents of this historical and well-established neighborhood, located on West Pleasant Street, together with residents of surrounding neighborhoods, are before you tonight in opposition to the proposal of GJC Associates, AKA Concord Orthopedics, to rezone well over 70 acres of land along Pleasant Street. Concord Ortho is a private, for-profit corporation. It is seeking to rezone a medium residential corridor, which consists of single and multi-family homes into what will be a high impact institutional zone. Concord Orthopedics has requested this rezoning for one purpose, so that it can build a freestanding 20,000 square foot specialized surgical center on what is now a beautiful but very narrow swath of 30.3 acres of exquisite woodland and significant wetland habitats. Tonight, we the residents will present numerous reasons why this proposal is not advisable and why it should not be allowed. We point out that rezoning should not occur simply to benefit one for-profit entity Rezoning for one entity is not good stewardship towards the residents of this neighborhood or surrounding neighborhoods, or for that matter, the citizens of the city of Concord. Rezoning should not occur when that entity has a multitude of viable alternative options. Rezoning should not be done because an entity claims inconvenience under the current zoning. Rezoning should not occur when it is inconsistent with the master plan, capital improvement projects, and when the city's desire for proper economic development is at stake. Please remember Concord Orthopedics, in case you didn't know, purchased the property 297 Pleasant Street because it needed to mitigate for wetlands that it sought to dredge and fill on the nearly 50 acres it recently purchased 
and or land swaps from their neighbors, the Unitarian Church. With that said, Concord Ortho went forth with the idea that it could easily and without significant argument move forward with plans to expand its practice into what is clearly not zoned for this type of medical structure. First, Concord Orthopedics representatives talked about a variance, and when it became clear that it could not meet the hardship standard, decided that rezoning the entire street was the easiest way to get what they desired. Tonight, Concord Orthopedics has wowed you with pretty pictorials, and they tried to sway you with their stories of stewardship and preservation of the land. They have tried to confuse you with stories of immediate need or proximity to the hospital for the just-in-case medical scenario. They've also tried to impress you with stories that they have looked far and wide across the city of Concord for many years and cannot come up with one single piece of property that is either properly zoned or fits the needs of the practice. Concord Ortho has also told you that there's no way that they can add on or build up upon the current structure because that, again, is just an inconvenience to them. Concord Ortho has no doubt stated that it cannot wait for expansion along the Langley Parkway extension as they are behind the times by not having a specialized joint surgical center in our capital. If you read between the lines here of what Concord Ortho said tonight, you will actually see that Concord Ortho's proposal is driven by the desire to make more money. It's as simple as that. You also see that Concord Ortho does not care what happens to those who live in the neighborhood, raise their children, animals in this location, and whose happiness, as well as our quality of lives, is tied into our homes, the land, the forests, the wildlife, and the beauty that is the last rural entryway into the city of Concord, the city that every one of us who comes before you tonight calls home. Tonight you will hear from myself, my neighbors, our friends, and others who reside in this area, as well as the surrounding community, who come before you in protest of this rezoning attempt by Concord Orthopedics. We do not in any way desire to hold back the needs of the medical community or the needs of the city for strong economic development. We simply believe that all rezoning should be done in a thoughtful manner, consistent with the master plan, and should not be driven by the supposed convenience of one entity. We thank for your time and your dedication to the proper and continued logical development of our beautiful capital city. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Great. I'd just like to point out before I step down, um, one more point. Um, I would like to kind of cite uh, a case from the 90s, Edgewood Civic Club versus Blaise Dell. Um, what it basically states is that zoning must comply with comprehensive plans so that zoning is by districts and not by individual pieces of property. This you know already. Uh, in this case from the 90s, um, the court cited that since zoning is not static, provisions is made for amendments and changes to be granted when in public interest and denied when it affects a special privilege solely. We feel in this interest, this is not, that rezoning here is not necessarily in the public interest, not in the public interest at all. This is self-serving and it affects one privileged entity only, that's Concord with the Phoenix. Did you Civic Club versus Blaisdell, is that a local, is that a local case? I believe it is, sir. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who's next? Uh, my name is Jim Bates.